And for much more on the Republican Party, we now want to bring in the chair and the state executive committee men with the Greenville County Republican Party. So let's go and start with the chair, Yvonne Julian. So uh, Yvonne, I think ultimately when you look at what happened in Nevada, what was the message that you think voters sent to the two-person race that it seems like it's happening right now? Well, I think the primary message was that President Trump was not on the ballot, so they expressed that he is the candidate of choice for a lot of them, uh, and that Nikki Haley is uh, the candidate for a lot of people who have never supported President Trump, so there's a home for them in her as a candidate, but I think they were expressing their support for President Trump. Okay, and uh, Jeff mm -hmm. Davis, the state executive committee man for the Greenville County Republican Party, uh, what kind of trajectory now does that look like for South Carolina? Because we're up next, coming the 24th. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's it's Teflon for Donald Trump here in the state of South Carolina. Yeah. I think there's a lot of momentum and a lot of excitement. I actually spoke, spoke to one of the state leaders for the Trump campaign earlier today, and they were like over the moon. I mean, when, mm -hmm. when Nikki Haley comes in with 31% of the vote and you got 63% going to none of the above and Donald <laughs> Trump's not on there, you know, People are pretty excited. So the, the, the caucus will be on in Nevada will be on Thursday. Right. Nikki Haley's not even on it. So all of the delegates yeah. out of the state of Nevada will be going to Trump. And I think that they're going to carry that momentum right in the state of South Carolina. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Ms. Julian, as the chair, are you, are you able to kind of maneuver now at this point to support Donald Trump? Or as the chair, you kind of still have to remain neutral because there are still ultimately four people in this race. Exactly, you're exactly right. And we as a body are neutral. Uh, we have individual members who have ex all along expressed their support. But as a body, we have not have not given an endorsement. You know, I want to wait till the primary. And we do, we, I mean, we have, you know, had people, other candidates reach out to us. Asa Hutchinson came to speak at our event, you know, so we are, we do understand that neutrality, but uh, the, clearly it's hard to avoid the momentum, you know, and so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as what's happening on, on the national level with Ron McDaniel now, right. offering up her resignation, what was your initial reaction once you saw that? Um, I was grateful that she acknowledged, I mean, to me, you as a professional, you look at your own job performance, and I think you know when you've done a poor job, and I'm grateful that she finally acknowledged that she has not done well, she's not done well by us, and particularly when the budget information came out. I think that was very, you know, unfortunately, not a good look for either her or for our party that we did not have the oversight to allow things like flowers and, you know, limousines and, you know, just a non-essential money to be spent there when it's so desperately needed for grassroots, which is what our party is about. It's all about getting people involved. You know, historically, the uh, um, the emphasis is on you know the elected officials and candidates, but for us, it's about people. It's about voters and the new candidates who can bring in some fresh blood. So, mm -hmm. so Mr. Davis, do you agree mm -hmm. that she needs to step down? Oh, mm -hmm. I completely agree. And, and, yeah. and for, certainly coming from the grassroots perspective, this right. is a day we didn't see coming soon enough. Right. So we've been waiting for this to happen. Yeah. And I think the real question that a lot of people are going to have out there for Donald Trump, the Trump supporters, or right. who is he going to replace her with? Yeah. So and that who do you is think? Gonna, mm -hmm. uh, we don't know right now. Okay. I mean, there's a lot mm -hmm. of names in the hat. There was a gentleman that uh, Donald Trump had endorsed for that position, uh, the mm -hmm. chair of the North Carolina mm -hmm. Party. Mm -hmm. He may be the right answer, maybe somebody else, but it's going to be very interesting mm -hmm. to see who he picks to replace Roman McDaniel. Right. And Ms. Julian, there, there's something mm -hmm. that, that we've been covering with yeah. the Republican side. We've heard reports, seen reports as far as Republican congressmen saying, there's nothing I can run on. Give me something to run on, saying right. that they're embarrassed that nothing was passed. We saw last night how the vote failed to impeach the mm -hmm. Homeland Security mm -hmm. Secretary. We saw mm -hmm. the vote fail for the aid to Israel. Mm -hmm. So when Republican voters come to you, or even candidates say, you know, what can we run on? What, what is that answer? Well, from the grassroots perspective, there's an abundance. I mean, we feel like the fountain is overflowing with social problems, economic problems that, you know, we see problems here in Greenville. I mean, I grew, I'm from the South originally, but I lived in California for 30 years, and my biggest fear is that Greenville, South Carolina are all on that slide that has corrupted Colorado, that's corrupted the entire West Coast, places like Seattle that I travel to for work, you know, to see what has happened to those. It is just devastating to me. And if you can't run on the record of looking at what Democrats have done to some of the most beautiful spots in this country, to San Francisco, to Denver, Colorado, you know, to then if you can't, if you can't see that and see that that matters to people, if you can't run on the debt, you know, if you can't run on somebody considering to send their, your child to war and to you know, put your child in debt when it's not happening to theirs, you know, if you can't run on that, I don't know how to help you because those are kind of the issues that matter to people. Yeah, Mr. Davis, she, she brought up the, 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 yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I, she, Yvonne is absolutely correct. We see it as overflowing in the number of issues that candidates can get yeah. out there, but we, we work from the bottom up. We it's look right. from the precinct level to the county to the state. 
the, the federal stuff, it, it's we're, we got seven out of, out of 435 yeah. congressmen that go up there. But we can make a difference working here in the grassroots, change things on county council. We have yeah. uh, county council members that passed a, a massive tax increase on, on the property taxpayers here in, the, in, yeah. in mm -hmm. Greenville County. We have an opportunity to replace some of those county council members, and we can make some actual change. There is so much stuff going on at the state house right now. Uh, a judicial reform, we had two two uh, elected solicitors here speaking about judicial reform. Yeah. We are one of two states in the, in the nation right. that let the legislators pick our, our judges. And then, then we let those same legislators go appear before those same judges. How mm -hmm. are you going to rule in front of somebody who puts you on yeah. that bench or can take you off that bench? So we have tons of things here locally w that we can do, and people are really excited and getting really engaged right. on the mm -hmm. local level. Okay, so kind of more focus here on the local level yes, as yes, far exactly. as the federal level is right. concerned. Okay, Mr. Lynn, Mr. Davis, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful.